Hey friends, hope you're well. This is the Opal C1 and it's trying to shake up the webcam space because you see, if you're serious about live streaming or video meetings, chances are you have a DSLR or mirrorless camera hooked up via HDMI and a third party app. And that's where this new webcam becomes really interesting. It's made by a relatively new startup called Opal and it promises 4K DSLR quality video in a small webcam form factor. Plus, for all the MKB HD fans out there, myself included, you may want to know that this is a webcam that Marquez uses and more interestingly, Opal is a company he's invested into. So, this thing naturally caught my attention and I've been using it over the past two weeks and here's what I found. So I'll answer the question I think many of you are probably going to ask right away, which is, is the video quality really that good on the Opal C1? Well, let's jump onto the webcam right here. So as you can see on screen now, uh, it's actually pretty impressive, more impressive than I thought it would be. It's similar to hooking up my older Canon DSLR as a webcam with a Tamron 28mm lens. So this is a different view and angle with some Opal app settings adjusted for a better picture. And yeah, what do you guys think? The sharpness is definitely pretty impressive and so is the blurry background, the bokeh. It's actually software generated, which is pretty surprising and it looks to mimic apertures between f1.8 to 2.8 for a very smooth, dreamy and professional look. It's the best looking bokeh I've seen in a webcam considering it's pretty physical limitations and I'd say most people won't be able to tell that it's software generated. The webcam supports up to 4K with MKBHD's favorite frame rate of, you guessed it, 30 frames per second. All in all, it looks great. And in fact, last week I had someone ask me over a Zoom call what webcam setup that I'm using. So obviously other people can tell that it looks pretty good despite the compression on Zoom calls. Comparing it to my Logitech Brio 500, you can tell it's just infinitely sharper and the Opal C1 just has more lifelike saturation tones and the bokeh does make a difference. Against the MacBook Pro M2, it's still not much competition. I think it's pretty clear the Opal C1 does have that DSLR quality that even with MacBook software processing looks inferior to the C1. So it does make for a pretty decent upgrade from the MacBook Pro. As with the Insta360 Link, which is similarly priced, I think that is more of a closer comparison between the two, as you can see on screen here. Let me know what you guys think about these comparisons. But is the Opal C1 as good as setting up my Sony a7 IV with a G Master Prime lens as a webcam? Let's be honest, of course it wouldn't be, but I've also got far better uses for my a7 IV than to use it as a very inconvenient $5,000 webcam. So the Opal C1 does in fact look like a low-end DSLR setup, and some people will probably be surprised to know you're using a small webcam. So yeah, I was pretty impressed with the video quality straight out of the box. So I was curious to look into the specifications on this webcam. It has a considerable 7.8 millimeter 4K Sony sensor, the very same 12 megapixel sensor in Google's first Pixel phone. Also, you might not be able to tell through this video, but its build quality is actually really good. Straight out of the box when I picked it up, I was taken by surprise by its heft in hand. Most webcams are made of recycled plastics, but Opal C1 is made of machined aluminium for the most part and has this anodized and paint splash finish that I quite enjoy. It's a great fit on my ultra wide monitor here, just as much as it is on my MacBook Pro when I'm working remotely. It's an A plus for its design. In the box, it's really simple. You get a magnetic lens cover, which has this microfiber material on the back, the mount, and a USB-C cable, all in a pretty nicely packaged design. The backside of this webcam looks pretty schlick too, which handles heat dissipation. And there's the USB-C port here and the thread to connect the included mount or to your own tripod. Also, let me know if you guys prefer this webcam in white or black. I personally prefer it in the white. 
And then there's the software features, which is what sets it apart from standard run-of-the-mill webcams and even DSLR webcams. On-screen gestures are a nice touch, like pinch to zoom and the peace sign to quickly turn off video. The peace sign is sort of funny because your video feed fades to black, but technically the webcam is still on. If you're conscious of those awkward last moments of zoom calls where everyone's frantically looking around the screen to exit out of the call, you could peace out, fade to black, and then disconnect from the call, or you could just command shift plus E to end zoom calls, your call and how flamboyant you want to be. There is also something Opal calls face lock, which is basically the equivalent to Apple's center stage or Insta360's AI framing with automatic image enhancements. The app is nicely integrated into the Mac toolbar and gives you useful features like manual camera settings and exposure and focus locks to other more gimmicky features like filters and logo overlays. I recommend tinkering with the manual settings for a few minutes when you first get it to suit the space that you're in to get the most out of the webcam. By the way, the off-center camera design of the C1 is to make way for the multi-array of microphones here. Yep, these holes here are the stereo microphones that does a better job than average producing clear audio if you're like me and prefer to have an all-in-one setup for video calls rather than having a dedicated uh, microphone as well. And here's how it stacks up to the MacBook and Logitech Brio with a quick microphone test. Life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. Life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. Life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. Life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. But let me know what you guys think of the microphone audio uh, quality in the comments below. So the one area that I can fault it on is its app and its software. It is slightly glitchy sometimes and it definitely has some bugs that needs to be fixed, particularly when it comes to recording. But thankfully, Opal is on top of it for the most part, and they are regularly releasing software updates to improve the Opal C1. So I've yet to mention pricing on this thing. And although it's a lot of webcam, it's also a lot of dollars. Opal, interestingly, has recently changed the pricing of the C1 from $300 to $250, which is much more palatable considering how unique this webcam currently is. Opal seems to have also removed the waitlist and any ongoing subscription fees, which is a win. So I think if you're someone who values either uh, quality webcam or convenience or well-designed tech, actually, if you value all three things, the Opal C1 is absolutely a consideration at $250. It has the video quality to put your best self forward in video cores without the hassle of a DSLR setup, nor the large footprint it takes up on your desk setup or office. If you guys are interested in checking it out, I'll drop a link to the C1 down below. And if you made it to the end of this video, guys, comment the code word gemstone and I'll give it a like. And I'll leave a video right here to more desk accessories and tech gadgets that you might like. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Does the piece fade out work here?